Hey, what's up guys? So I mentioned this in my last video. I made a few upgrades to the gear and the equipment that I'm using for the vlog, for these videos, and also for my photography. So new year, new gear. I mentioned in the last video that I had gotten a new mic for Christmas. It was an upgrade from what I had been using. What I had been using was this, the Rode Video Micro. A great budget mic. Um, I had been using it for everything and it does pretty well. It definitely does well for the price. But this is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. That's what I'm recording on right now. And it's a upgrade in pretty much every way. Quality, features, everything. The Rode Video Micro doesn't have its own power source, it just gets powered through the audio jack and the camera, and that can be problematic sometimes because you have to rely heavily on the preamps and the camera, and the preamps and my camera aren't amazing. So that's one of the first advantages with this mic is that it is powered, I can put the volume to plus 20 decibels, and cut out pretty much everything from the preamps and the camera and just use what's coming straight from the microphone. It makes the audio a lot more clear and it has less of that hissing sound and that kind of thing. One thing that was really cool about the Rode Video Micro that I was using is that it actually comes with this little windscreen that I was using. These are literally actually called dead kittens, dead cats. That's like their actual name. But anyway, it cuts down on wind noise. Um, and so I was always using that when I was outside with this microphone and the Video Mic Pro Plus doesn't come with one. Uh, I'll probably get one eventually, but I don't have one right now. So um, what it does have might cut out a little bit of wind noise, but not very much wind noise. So I'll have to pay attention to that when I'm outdoors for right now. But I want to do a quick little audio test just so you guys could see the difference between the Rode Video Micro and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. So. Just wanted to come outside for a second and show you guys the difference between the audio with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which is what I'm using right now, uh, and the Rode Video Micro, which I'll do in a second. Um, it's really not a fair comparison, and I'll tell you why once I switch over to the other mic, but this is the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Alright, and now I'm using the Rode Video Micro again, and like I said, this isn't a fair comparison because the Rode Video Micro doesn't have a power source, so I can't turn down the preamps in my camera. So I had to turn my preamps up just to basically match the volume level as close as I could just by eyeballing it. Um, so you're going to already hear a lot of just noise and it's not going to be as clear because I'm using the preamps through my camera. But that's the way that you kind of have to use it, or at least the way that I certainly use it and probably the way that most people in this type of situation would have to use it as well. So this should kind of give you a feel for the difference in sound quality between the Pro Plus and the Video Micro. Like I said, it's not even really a comparison. The Pro Plus is an upgrade in basically every single way. The next upgrade that I got was this new camera setup, and it is massive. So I have been using and right now I'm still filming on my Canon SL2 which is outside of the SL1 which was the SL2's predecessor, Canon's smallest DSLR that they make and it's an awesome camera and great but it's like smaller than the lens on this setup right now. It's, it's very compact and this setup is very much not compact like that is not that is not what this setup has going for it. Um, this setup, I, I have to break it down a little bit because um, this, as it is right here, is not what I'm ever going to use to vlog with. This is, the camera body is a Canon 7D, and this is the Canon EFS 17-55 2.8 lens. Awesome lens, really cool camera. I'm gonna talk about the camera in a second. Um, the reason that I actually bought this setup, I found a guy selling this uh, online a few weeks ago and it was a really great price. I was actually only looking for this lens, it's the EFS 17-55 to lens. It's a really good zoom lens, it has a nice range 
and the aperture opens up to 2.8, so it's a really great option for a zoom lens. And then I just happened to find somebody selling this setup with the Canon 7D, the battery grip for the 7D, and this lens for about the same price as this lens goes for used by itself. So I really couldn't say no. Um, I picked up the lens and my plan is that this lens is going to actually become my main vlogging lens. Um, it's wide enough at 17 to vlog with. What I had been using to vlog with before that is somewhere here. Here it is. It's the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter, also an EFS lens. This lens has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are that it's really wide. 10 on a crop sensor camera is really wide field, field of view. Um, the disadvantages is that uh, the aperture values are pretty abysmal. Um, at the wide end, at 10, your aperture is only gonna be able to open up to 4.5 and I never use it at 10. 10 is, for me, just way too wide. I don't like it. Um, and if you're zoomed in, if you're at 18, the best aperture value you're gonna get is 5.6 from this, which is not letting a whole lot of light in. So my camera already by itself struggles in low light situations for video and uh, this lens just wasn't helping in those situations. So the new lens, the 17 to 55 with a 2.8 aperture, I've already seen that it does way better. I mean, obviously it's going to do way better, but it, it definitely has made a noticeable difference in how well it does in low light situations. Um, and 17 is wide enough for me. Uh, I, I, I'm glad that it goes to 17 and rather than just 18, but 17 I can definitely use for vlogging. And even here in the studio, I've a lot of times used what I'm using right now is the 50 millimeter prime lens, which is a 1.8 aperture, so it has a really wide aperture. Um, but 50 millimeters on a crop sensor camera is really tight field of view, so I'm actually gonna show you guys, I'm going to film on this camera, which I'm not going to do very often. I'll talk about that in a second. But I wanna just show you guys how far away from me this camera is. So here I am, here's where the mic and everything is set up. And way over there is where my camera actually is right now. So it has to be really far away, which for me has the disadvantage of, I can't really move it around, I can't do very many different shots and angles with that. And also it just has a, a very static feel because it's over there. I can't really touch it at all. I definitely can't touch it at all. It's way too far away. Um, I can't change how zoomed in it is. I can't zoom out, anything like that. Um, so probably even in the studio, this lens is going to replace what I'm using now. Um, and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and switch these lenses out right now. All right, so now we are using the new lens and everything probably looks pretty similar except that the camera is now easily within my reach. I can change settings if I need to. I don't have to get up and walk across the room to change anything. So that's mostly just nicer for me. Um, the aperture on this is 2.8 wide open versus 1.8 wide open on the 50 millimeter lens. So not getting quite as much light in, but it's plenty to work in this area and with this lighting and uh, I'm happy with it. It makes my life a lot easier here. So then back to the new camera, which I got, which is the Canon 7D. I have the 10 to 18 millimeter thrown on here right now because the 17 to 55 is filming me right now. Um, like I said, I was never really planning to buy this camera. I just found the lens with this camera for the same price as what the lens would be by itself normally. So I thought, you know, I could get this camera, the whole package, and then maybe sell the camera and make some money back. But I've been using the camera um, since I bought it, just out of curiosity, and I really actually like it and I'm not sure that I'm going to sell it. In, in fact, I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep it. Um, I think I might even actually make a video about this camera itself, like separately from everything, but 
for photography, this camera is pretty awesome. It's like 10 years old now, but it's still a beast at photography. Video settings, um, it's not something that I'm going to be using for video. Uh, it does 1080p at 30 frames per second max. The video audio focus, uh, it's, it's, it's not a vlogging camera. It's not something that I would use. Autofocus for filming. Um, the codec on the video isn't great, but the picture quality is really nice. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using it for is now I'm going to be able to have two cameras for photography, you know, um, especially at an event, wedding or something like that. I can have two different lenses on two different bodies at the same time and not have to change out a lens every single time that I want to get a different shot. So uh, that's going to be really nice and really helpful. And yeah, I'm definitely, definitely enjoying this 7D. Um, I also don't remember if I mentioned this, but it comes with the, or it came with when I bought it, uh, the guy sold it to me with the battery grip. Um, and uh, I've never, I mean, again, my SL2 is the smallest DSLR. Like, you, there's no room even for your pinky on the grip on that one. So you're kind of like holding it like this. Now I have like a full size camera body with battery grip and everything. And I really like it. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. So, uh, so yeah, that is pretty much it for all the new gear and upgrades that I've gotten in the last few weeks. I'm really excited about all of it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what are you guys using for gear? What kind of gear are you looking at? Are you even into camera gear? Did you watch this whole video thinking, what is he even talking about? If you did, why'd you keep watching? Let me know. Um, but I hope you did enjoy it, and if you haven't yet, you might want to think about subscribing to this channel, and even if you have subscribed to the channel, about hitting the notification bell so that you can get notified every single time I make a new video. I appreciate all of you guys, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.